your ability inside you and me. Made to do anything we or we can be. But one bird's eye view at us just shows it shows that beneath God's plan we let it go. Oh no. Rain your love down, won't you rain down your love? Let it drip just like the sun from above. Rain your love down, won't you let it start? Wash. The wicked mind and the sick at heart. Let it rain. Rain your love down, won't you rain down your love. And let it drip just like the sun from above. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, let me welcome you to the mental health. First of all, I want to thank Stevie Wonder for those lyrics. And for those of y'all that don't know what I'm talking about or what song, there's a song that is so relevant for this time right now, and it's called Rain Down Your Love. A lot of y'all get tired of me talking about love and saying, what the hell you talk always talking about love? Don't you hate this? You know, I, I admit, hate can get some shit moving. <laughs> um, but it's not sustainable. It's really not. It's like, what's the end game? You know. Uh when you look at a bunch of people that's walking around angry and angry and angry and angry, it's like they're doing more damage to their self than they're actually doing outside themselves. In fact, they have corrupted the, themselves so much that their outer world has to match it. So, um, yeah, I do speak about love a lot because I need to balance there's enough hatred going on out in the world that you don't really need too much more hatred added to me. I'm, I would be like Donald Trump. I would be taking lighter fluid and <laughs> putting it on um, the flame. But what I wanted to uh, talk about, you know, besides that this morning is when we talk about love, a lot of us have not been shown love in our families. You know, yeah, we've been made to do the chores and you know, I may have been guilty of that myself, um, but no, I can't say that because I've always showed my children love. I've always, um, because being an empath, I think that, yes, I've made some mistakes along the way, and I know it, but just having a realistic talk with my uh, daughter, sometimes it lets me know that, you know, Maybe because of what was done to me, I kept the discipline in in her life, but I also had a balance of affection, and that made me feel good to hear that, because a lot of times our offspring are real quick to tell us what we did wrong, if we allow them that freedom, first of all, because I was never allowed that freedom to even say no to my parents or I can't even imagine it. <laughs> and um, my, I always allowed in my heart enough healthy nose for my daughter. I had rules and I had limitations and there were boundaries. But I think that she does as well as she does 
and that and that's not the best. We all have our challenges, but I think that in terms of our relationship, there was never that part of it where um, she didn't get to express herself. Unlike my childhood when, and the people that grew up in my generation, because we would have told our parents we didn't like something, they would have knocked us on site. You gonna like it, and, you know. By the time I finished whooping your head, or like my dad used to say, I'm going to beat your back in. I'm going to beat your back in. I mean, damn. So, but what I'm saying all this to say, this rant this morning, y'all, is to try to allow your children to have some autonomy. Please. Allow them to have some age-appropriate nose. Um, my, my grandbaby is so crazy. She um, is very challenging right now. And, you know, she's asserting herself because she realizes that she can do certain things and get the attention. And I mean, I can't challenge everything she does. But I know that a lot of people that I see or I hear or I've heard growing up, man, that child need a whooping. That child need a beating. Especially in church where you these little kids were made to sit down for hours and hours and hours like little freaking soldiers. Y'all know damn well the kid got so much activity, but he was trained. So you can be trained to do anything. Like we trained our kids to sit down in the black service, in the black church for hours and hours and hours. And if that ain't discipline, I don't know what the hell is. But again, I'm saying all this to say, give your baby some autonomy. You know, give them some healthy nose. Give them some um, room to assert themselves. Because when you do that, you give them a healthy self-esteem that when they get older, they know how to say no to these Negroes or these uh, white folks or these women or whatever it is out there that's presenting an obstacle in their lives. You're giving them a head start by letting them know that, hey, your body is not for hurting. Your body has, there are boundaries around your body and ain't nobody, not even my mama, violated those boundaries. So how am I, it's not going to be easy for me to let somebody outside violate those boundaries. And this is what we have to do to our children. If we want to build new, new Americans, new people, new Africans in America, or whatever you want to call ourselves, new descendants of slaves. We have to start with the self-esteem. You know, we have to start because these people have beat us down so bad. We have followed that we have a pain body. And the body is so painful. It's like every time you hear something, you want to did a white person do it or did a black person do it. Or if you hear about something, you 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 know, you wonder where the white man is. The police get behind you, you get to going crazy. All these things are is a battle for your mind. It's a battle for your mind. It's a battle of the fittest. So it's it, it's going to be the fire next time, like James Baldwin said. So you need to get your soul and your mind ready for this war that we're in. And the least, least thing you can do is equip your children with the proper ammunition to deal with with the obstacles in this maze and the um, all the all the uh, advantages they're gonna need with dealing with the the shark infested waters of predators, people, men or women out here looking to take advantage of them to use them to do all types of stuff. So all this stuff falls into you, and I know that this is a thankless job. <laughs> Being a parent, and especially a mom, you don't get the thanks. You know, you're probably not going to get them. But I want you to know that that's the most important job you can have. And you have been adjudicated that job. And I hope you take it serious. To create, just like a, 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 a pile of clay, and as a creator, you have an ability to create and shape a human being. Open his mind to the right pages and allow him to explore. Allow him to grow. And above all, 
don't send him out there abused and wounded for somebody else to just finish the job off. All right? So with that being said, I'm going to go. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time in the mental house.